Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Banned Spirits, a spirit tribal deck that's essentially blue-white, splash and green for just collected company. The 4 mana instant that lets us take a look at the top 6 cards of our library, and we can put 2 creature cards with converted mana cost 3 or less from among them onto the battlefield. So company being an instant also plays quite nicely in the spirit tribe, since we've got so many cards we want to play at instant speed, like our counter spell and various flash creatures, so we can just keep up our mana and then maybe play collected company end of turn, and there's no shortage of powerful 2 and 3 mana creatures we can hit with company in this deck. And another nice addition is Skyclave Apparition from Zandika Rising, a 3 mana 2 2 spirit that when it enters the battlefield can exile up to one target, non land, non token permanent we don't control, with converted mana cost 4 or less. And when the apparition leaves the battlefield, the opponent gets an XX blue illusion creature token where X was that card's converted mana cost, but they never get the exile card back, which is pretty key. And we even have a few ways of protecting our key creatures, thanks to Rattle Chains, a 2 mana 2 1 spirit with flash and flying. And when Rattle Chains enters the battlefield, target spirit gains hexproof until end of turn, and rattle chains also allows us to play all future spirits at instant speed, which is quite useful. And we also have two copies of Kira, Great Glass Spinner, a 2-2 legendary spirit with flying, saying creatures we control have. Whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability for the first time each turn, counter that spell or ability instead. So Kira is a great way to protect us against spot removal spells. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, some of our key creatures also include Supreme Phantom, a 2 mana 1 3 spirit with flying, giving other spirits we control plus 1 plus 1. And we've got Empyrean Eagle as another lord, as a 2 3 bird spirit with flying, giving other creatures we control with flying plus 1 plus 1. So this is how we can get a ton of damage in. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 1 mana, we've got our full playset of Spectral Sailor, 1 mana 1 1 spirit with flash and flying. And for 4 mana, we also get to draw a card, which is a nice ability to keep up alongside our other instant speed plays. At 2 mana we've got a Lofty Denial as our counter spell of choice, can counter target spell unless its controller pays 1 mana, but if we control a creature with flying we can counter that spell unless its controller pays 4 mana instead, turning it into a better mana leak, which is quite powerful. Then we've got Rattle Chains, as well as Shacklegeist, a 2 mana 2 2 spirit with flying, and Shacklegeist can only block creatures with flying, and we can tap 2 untapped spirits we control to tap target creature we don't control, and we don't even have to tap the Shacklegeist itself to use that ability, so we can maybe tap a summoning 6 spirit that we just played for the turn, to still maybe tap down opposing creatures to make it difficult for the opponent to race. And then of course we've got our Supreme Phantom, and our Imperian Eagle as our lords, as well as two copies of a Glasspool Mimic, which is another new addition from Zendika Rising. Not actually a spirit, but we may have Glasspool Mimic enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature we control, so it can just copy one of our key creatures, like maybe one of our lords, or a Skanklave Apparition if we need more removal, and it can also be played as a tap land if we just need more mana. And then finally we've got two copies of Nubble Gas Herald as another spirit we can play at instant speed, and when the Herald or another spirit enters the battlefield, field under our control, we can tap target creature and opponent controls, so once again makes it very difficult for any creature deck to race us, since we can just keep tapping their stuff down. And then we've got our four companies, and then going over the mana base, this is where things get a little bit more complicated since there's a ton of ways to approach the mana base. I decided to include four copies of Unclaimed Territory, which is essentially a blue-white dual land which can help us cast Skyclave Apparition and Kira, while being an untapped land that doesn't cost us any life. And then we've got some shock lands with four copies of Hallowed Fountain, two copies of Breeding Pool and two copies of Temple Garden. We also have the full playset of the Green-White Pathway from Zendikar Rising, and then a few check lands with Glacial Fortress and Hinterland Harbor, and two basic islands in case my opponent decides to use a card like Field of Ruin or Ghost Quarter. It's nice to have a few basics to search up. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. We've got uh, Rattle Chains on turn 2, which is always nice. And a Lofty Denialist interaction. Any third land lets me play Eagle or Heralds. So we've got a bit of creature interaction too here with Harold. And then Pathway, I have to decide if we want to play it as a white source for Skyclave Apparition or a green source in case we draw company later. Well, I guess uh, we've made our decision here. Now Prospector potentially makes Lofty Denial awkward if they have the mana to uh, pay for it. So that resolves and then 
just flash in the rattle chains. I'll gladly ambush a prospector here. Alright, breeding pool means I probably take two. Still likely gonna play rattle chains first, but there's always a chance we wanna do something else. Snoop is fine. I guess we'll go with a Herald. And then we can hit for two. Pass it back. War Chief resolves. Flash and rattle chains. Can tap down Snoop, since I will gladly trade the rattle chains for War Chief if they want to attack with it. And then just take one. All right. So, could be a good time for Apparition XL Warchief. The only downside is if my opponent has a Krenko, which they then get to resolve. So yeah, playing Apparition to XL Warchief is probably not the safest plan. And we'll just keep up everything. So Muxes I can counter. Ringleader is probably fine, since I'm planning to kill the opponent pretty quickly with double Empyrean Eagle. And I can wait for them to attack to ambush with the Eagle, instead of tapping something down with the Herald. So we'll see. Alright, opponent goes for Muxus. It's not gonna happen. And then now Apparition to Exile Warchief seems fine. And I'll probably do it in the opponent's upkeep. So I can also tap a creature down to prevent it from attacking. So Apparition Exiles Warchief, Herald taps down Snoop. There's a Krenko on top, so glad we tapped down Snoop, otherwise they could have used Krenko's ability with the Snoop. No haste to activate Krenko right away. And a Lofty Denial is perfect. So, let's see, my opponent's at 10. So if I were to play Eagle now... I'm not quite threatening Lethal with the Apparition. But I could attack with the Apparition in the hopes that they block with Krenko. Yeah, and otherwise we'll just uh, use Eagle to tap something down in the opponent's turn. Opponent's gonna take it. Do I still flash an Eagle? So my opponent can't Muxus me next turn, so what's the worst case scenario? Given that we have Denial in hand, I don't think anything can go too wrong. But maybe I want to still tap down Kranko to prevent too many tokens from being made. So we'll just hit for 6. And then in the opponent's upkeep, once again, I'll uh, play the eagle. Tap down Krenko. And then Denial can counter Chieftain. Goblin Matron's fine. Suppose that can get the Cycling Goblin, which we can't counter with Denial. 
but there's no one creature they can kill here that would make a huge difference given that we have a second eagle anyway. Gets a war chief. All right, they did find a prospector on top, so that's pretty lucky. So gonna have to counter that, otherwise they've got access to a ton of mana. But now with one land remaining, I don't think they can do anything too powerful. All right, sweet. So we managed to dismantle the goblin deck with a couple well-placed counter spells and spirits to tap down the opposing creatures. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play and we're facing a Lures of the Dream Den deck. But uh, being on the play means we can potentially counter a core Spirit Dancer. The mana situation is not great, no green mana yet for company and uh, missing a third land, but I'll keep. We've got a Rattle Chains and a Lofty Denial, which is good early interaction. And then any land will let me cast Eagle and Kira. All right, so this is a Black Rat Pyromancer deck instead, which is going to be a tougher matchup than the Spirit Dancer deck, since we had the Lofty Denial on turn two. And the Pyromancer deck typically has a lot of disruption. So we'll see what they do here. Another Stitcher Supplier. So they are playing the version with Claim to Fame. And they're gonna attempt to reanimate a young Pyromancer. How do we feel about that one? Yeah, I guess that's fine. And then I wanna flash in my Rattle Chains. And then we'll have to play Kira right now if we want to prevent my opponent from killing my stuff because playing it in response to removal doesn't actually work because then the creature's already targeted. So yeah, we could just main phase Kira here. And then next turn we can decide if we want to keep up Lofty Denial or maybe play an Empyrean Eagle to apply a bit more pressure and then any land lets us cast company which is going to be great. Opponent still missing red mana. So having Kira in this matchup is definitely pretty key. Could block the supplier, didn't necessarily expect a pump spell but they might just want to mill three more cards which we probably don't want them to so I'll take four. They might have had a village rights anyway, but then it's kind of weird that they played their land already instead of maybe hoping to find a red mana. All right, opponent decides to just put lures in their hands. Mimic, I'll just play as a tap land here and then get to smash for four. Keep up Lofty Denial as well as Empyrean Eagle. Sometimes you want to just play your Lord's main phase to get in more damage, but in this case I think we would rather keep up Denial. Pyromancer is going to stay home. Village rights to sacrifice, that's okay. Still no red mana. And Lurus, I probably want to counter here. Although they don't have many creatures in the graveyard, but... If they get back a Stitcher Supplier, that could be bad for me. And then now I'm kind of into just main phasing a company. Hit Empyrean Eagle and Apparition. Get rid of the Pyromancer. Smash for six. And next turn we've got a ton of options between another company or just playing another lord. And my opponent should be pretty dead. So yeah, Kira definitely quite important in this type of matchup where the opponent typically has a lot of spot removal. So glad that we managed to draw it. On to the next one. And we are on the draw with a fine opening hand. Can play Temple Garden on turn one. Territory makes blue mana, and we've got the green mana required to play company eventually. P 
opponent on blue red. I guess we can play Breeding Pool here. Don't think it makes a huge difference. Maybe if we draw Lofty Denial, we would rather have the Breeding Pool in play. Alright, it's a blue red Arcanist deck. Yeah, that could be kind of a problem. For now, I guess we don't have to give away that for a Spirit deck. We'll just flash in a Rattle Chains. We can next turn potentially tap down Arcanists thanks to Shacklegeist, so that's something we can consider. So this looks like an aggressive wizard tribal deck. They didn't have a one mana instant at least. So we've got a few options. Kind of like hit for two and then kind of wait to see what happens. Maybe Herald taps down Arcanist. Atlas, okay. So, seems like a good window for... I guess we can wait, because we can just ambush Atlas with the Imperial Eagle here. And then now Kira comes at a nice time here to protect our creatures, although it didn't seem like they had removal. Otherwise we might have seen it already. Uh, could just main phase company. Could play Kira. Uh, given that my opponent could have some burn spells, I would rather not take two here if I can avoid it. And then we'll just protect our creatures with Kira. I think that's probably our safest bet. And then I can hit for five. And then if I draw land, we maybe have Herald plus another two mana creature to tap down multiple creatures from the opponents. Sailor also works. So I can play Herald now. To tap down Kefnets. And then, yeah, my opponent explodes, so... Could play the Sailor in the opponent's turn once again to tap something down with Herald, and then in our turn we can main phase the company, hit two more spirits, and with Herald we can potentially tap two more things down and potentially attack for lethal, so... Yeah, my opponent was lacking like a one mana incident, like maybe Shock or Wizard's Lightning, to punch a hole through our plan, but once Kira's in play that becomes a lot more difficult. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Plenty of interaction with Denial and Apparition, good mana. We've got double white, blue and green. Opponent on mono red aggro with a turn two Steamkin. Well, we will be on the back foot, that's for sure. So I have to decide if I want to keep up Lofty Denial or play Shacklegeist. Next turn I'm probably going to play Apparition either way. So if I play Shacklegeist, there's a good chance it gets uh, killed by a burn spell. But that's not the end of the world. And if I keep up Denial, they're just going to play a bunch of one mana spells, so it's not going to be incredibly effective. So we'll just step out here. Ah, Shacklegeist gets stomped. That's fine. Opponents deciding whether they want to cast that one mana instant to pump Steamkin, and they will use Rimrock Knight. Alright, so good spot for Apparition. And then next turn I can decide to maybe play Mimic Tapped alongside playing Eagle, or we can just keep up Rattle Chains and Lofty. Double Robber hits Land and... Shacklegeist. So do I want to trade? Could be okay. Apparition doesn't get pumped by Empyrean Eagle, sadly, since it doesn't fly. But I think I'll wait one more turn. Yeah, I'll take four. 
company is nice too, so now I'm definitely playing this as a tap land. And then, yeah, I'm kind of liking just eagle and pass a turn. Both robbers attack, and my opponent finds a rattle chains. So they could, if they wanted to, play rattle chains and shackle geist, and then use that to tap down one of my blockers. But they didn't. So I could just trade away Empyrean Eagle and Apparition if they decide to activate Castle. But if they activate Castle, that's their entire turn gone. They don't get access to the exiled cards with robber. So I think that's okay here. Luckily, no Amber Cleave. I guess that's the card that would have punished us. Alright, now we'll pass with Rattle Chains, Denial, and Company at the ready. Bone Crusher Giants, okay. And so is Rimrock Knights. Ooh, only hit an Eagle. Still get to ambush the token, at least. Nebel Gas Herald's pretty useful. Annex resolves. They are going wide with Castle Embereth, but drawing the Glacial Fortress is great here. So I've got two creatures I can flash in at instant speed to tap down creatures from the opponent with Herald. Could play Apparition and Rattle Chains, and then Apparition can also exile something. So I think we're fine to attack. And then we'll tap down Giant and Rimrock Knight, and then Exile Annex. And then we should have lethal on the way back here. 5 plus 5 plus another 3 from Eagle, so that's Xaxes. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with an acceptable hand. It doesn't have a ton of interaction outside of the tap ability from Shacklegeist. But if we find a Lord at some point, we've got a ton of cheap creatures to pump up and uh, just two lands away from a collected company. Turn one all state, so life gain deck. The fact that our Skyclave Apparition can exile Heliot is definitely a big deal because that's otherwise a pretty difficult card to interact with. And then probably not worth it to trade one damage for one damage when I can just tap down Allsade with Shacklegeist. Especially if they have an Ajani's Pride Mate here. Ooh, Core Spirit Dancer. All right, so it's a uh, enchantment deck instead. So now I'm kind of sad that I didn't keep up Lofty Denial, but was expecting a life gain deck since they didn't have Lurus as companion. So... Keeping up Lofty Denial now, probably not super useful. 
since they still get to draw cards even if they don't resolve. So I suppose we'll just play Shacklegeist and then hit for two, tap down Spirit Dancer. So a green-white enchantment deck, so that explains the absence of Lurus. So now... I guess I do want to keep up Lofty Denial. So I can hit for four. And then Flash and Sailor to tap a creature down with the Shackle Geist ability and have Lofty Denial up as well. There's Heliots. Yeah, we'll counter that. If I draw land, I probably want a main phase company, so if we hit Skyclave Apparition, they can protect with the Alsade. Found Herald instead. It's definitely useful. So I can hit for five. And then flash in Herald and essentially tap two creatures down. Alex is okay. The multiverse provides me with fascinating new experiences. We're gonna minus using the Alsade, so if we can get rid of the Alsade, then they also lose the Shacklegeists. So my opponent hasn't gotten to attack much this game. Yeah, I think I'm into main phase company, and if we find a lord, the game is just over. And we found Supreme Phantom and Glasspool Mimic. Now, one interaction that I want to point out here is if we take Glasspool Mimic and Supreme Phantom, we won't be able to copy Supreme Phantom with Glasspool Mimic because Phantom is not on the battlefield yet when we have to make that decision. So just to prove a point here, I'll select both. And yeah, as you can see, we need to select which creature to copy before the Phantom's in play. But we'll just copy a Shacklegeist. And this should be lethal. So not the traditional Core Spirit Dancer deck, which probably would have played way more 1 and 2 mana Auras to put on the Spirit Dancer and draw cards with. Although we would have been able to tap the Spirit Dancer down repeatedly, so it's not like that game plan would have been much better here. So yeah, Banned Spirits, definitely a force to be reckoned with. We managed to even defeat aggressive decks on the draw, so it shows that the deck is pretty resilient, and with Apparition now we've got a nice catch-up mechanism to potentially still get back on the board and uh, interact with the opponent a bit more, so definitely one of the missing puzzle pieces for the deck. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.